Hey everyone, um, so today I want to talk about the next uh, major iteration um, of the Raspberry Pi uh, single board computer. I know that Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM has just come out, uh, but I still feel like it needs a little bit of extra oomph. Um, yeah, I also know that I could probably say that after every release, um, as sure you guys can too. Uh, this video is more about my wish list um, than prediction, but I will have a prediction at the very end uh, based on reality. I have been using Raspberry Pi ever since the original board was released uh, back in 2012. Um, back then it had a 700 megahertz uh, CPU uh, versus the 1.5 gigahertz we have right now. Um, I was super excited to see a credit card sized computer for 35 bucks. Um, now there have been multiple boards across four generations, um, but the expectations have been growing, right, as well. So let's talk about my wish list. Um, I will leave the links to all the products I talk about in the description below, uh, except for the Spectrum. Uh, you can pick it up on eBay for a couple hundred dollars um, if you're so inclined. Uh, there's also an emulator on the iOS um, as well as the Android, I believe. Uh, so if you want to just play around and see what it was like, uh, you can. So let's first run through the current board and see what it offers. So the latest iteration of the board has anywhere from 2 to 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's based on a Broadcom 1.5 gigahertz uh, CPU. Uh, you can overclock it, so mine's overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz uh, with an active cooler. Um, it has a couple of micro HDMI ports. Um, one of them is capable of uh, 60 hertz and another one is uh, 30 hertz only. Uh, it's powered through a USB-C connection. It has uh, four USB ports. Um, out of those four, only two ports are USB 3.0. Um, there's no onboard storage. Uh, you basically use a micro SD card as your storage device. Uh, you can also hook up an external um, SSD or a USB flash drive. Okay, first, let me talk about why uh, I want the board to be improved. I don't want new hardware and uh, updated software just for the sake of having new hardware and software, right? And it's not because just it's available. Um, there's a reason. Originally, when uh, Raspberry Pi came out, uh, it was more of a tinkering board. Uh, you couldn't really run a uh, desktop on it. Uh, it just wasn't fast enough. Um, you know, so the graphical user interface uh, wasn't responsive. Um, so if you wanted to build a cool robot, uh, if you want to kind of play around with Linux, uh, that's, what, that's what you got. Now the requirements have changed, right? It's been through several iterations. The Raspbian is responsive enough when you load it in GUI mode. And that's what people are looking for. So I personally want Google Docs to be fast. Um, I want to play YouTube videos uh, at 1080p with no tearing and dropped frames. And right now it's struggling with 720p. I mean, it's watchable, but it's not great, right? You still get dropped frames here and there. Um, even on my overclock machine. If you look at my other uh, video where I talk about Raspberry Pi as desktop replacement, you can kind of see uh, how long it takes to run um, Google Docs, how long it takes uh, to run Office applications. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about. So another piece that's important is being able to run uh, Netflix, Amazon Video, Hulu, and I don't want to do any crazy workarounds that I have to do right now, right? And then they're probably not even uh, feasible for an ordinary user. Now let's uh, briefly touch on storage. I know you can connect uh, an SSD or a USB flash drive uh, to one of the USB ports, uh, but then you lose kind of one of the ports. And uh, SSD drives, I mean, size-wise, right, they're almost the size of the board. Um, and some of them are even bigger than the board itself. So I don't think that's a viable workaround uh, long term uh, for me. So let me show you another board. Um, I saw it on uh, the DF robot side. It's also sold by Amazon. And uh, this is by no means a comparison, just purely because of the price. This board is over $400, but it has the features or at least has some of the features that I would be looking for in the future iterations of uh, the Raspberry Pi. So one of the reasons I'm comparing Raspberry Pi to this board is the size. Um, it's just a tiny bit bigger uh, than the Raspberry Pi 4. And it has a lot of the same 
uh, features. Uh, the board I'm showing you right now is called Latte Panda. Uh, the model is called Alpha. This board has uh, three USB 3 ports, has an Intel M3 CPU, um, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and has uh, 64 gigs of uh, eMMC storage. You can also add on an M.2 SSD drive, and it has HDMI output, so just a regular um, HDMI port, has a Type-C uh, support, and uh, an interesting feature, um, you know, one of the interesting features that it has, it has a built-in Arduino Leonardo, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it can run Windows 10 or Ubuntu. Here are the things that I would want Raspberry Pi to adopt from this board. Uh, so first and foremost is uh, storage. So this uh, Latte Panda board has uh, M.2 key, so you can uh, connect an M.2 SSD, and it has onboard 64 gigs of eMMC storage. I don't think um, that the SSD piece is doable on the Raspberry Pi, uh, just due to the cost of components and just the form factor. Uh, but I think 64 gigs of eMMC storage would be really, really nice. Reliability aside, uh, eMMC storage is also much faster. You can get about 250 megabytes per second read and about 90 megabytes per second write. Um, if you look at the benchmarks I'm showing right now, you can see that you can get about 35 megabytes per second read with a micro SD and about 17 megabytes per second write speed. So eMMC storage is just a lot faster. Now let's compare the micro SD card uh, to other storage media. Uh, what I have here is uh, an M SATA drive, I have a USB flash drive, and I have an M2 NVMe SSD drive. Um, and you can see it's just there's no competition. Um, you know, the micro SD card is several times slower than any of these. I'm using a USB flash drive, the one you see uh, here. Um, just because of the form factor, it's not the fastest, uh, but it's fast enough and it's uh, a lot faster than the micro SD card. So the next thing on my wish list uh, is the USB. Uh, right now, Raspberry Pi 4 has uh, four USB ports, but only two of those ports are USB 3 ports. Um, so I would want to see all four ports on Raspberry Pi to be USB 3. Or another option is uh, replacing USB 2.0 ports uh, with USB Type-C. Another issue that I have with the current board, uh, the two micro HDMI ports. Um, the question I have is why? I mean, how many people really want to connect two monitors to this uh, computer? I would want to see just a single regular HDMI port that supports uh, 4K resolution at 60 Hertz. I don't want to use any dongles. I just want a regular HDMI. Uh, the next thing on my list is a faster CPU. Um, the current CPU seems to be struggling, so it's not quite as snappy um, as a regular desktop. So I'm not saying just uh, to go ahead and add like an Intel M3 CPU or a Core i5 or anything like that and increase the price of the board to like $500. Um, no, just a faster iteration uh, from Broadcom, uh, something that would make the experience uh, or at least the desktop experience uh, much better. So this is uh, kind of my uh, general uh, wish list. Now let's talk about my predictions. Um, I want to talk about when the next uh, major iteration of the Raspberry Pi board might be coming. Uh, just a disclaimer, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, is usually pretty mum about any future release dates. So this is purely my speculation. Now, if we look at the past history, um, it took four months between the last iteration of Pi 2 and Pi 3 and over a year between uh, Raspberry Pi 3 and uh, Pi 4. Uh, this iteration of Pi 4 was released uh, in May of this year, and it was really scheduled to be released back in February, so I think I'm just going to count that as the date. Uh, so we might be getting a new version uh, towards the end of this year, or I think the first quarter of uh, 2021. I will uh, further speculate that we might be getting four USB 3.0 ports, and then uh, a two gigahertz Broadcom CPU. And we also might be getting potentially a 16 gigabyte version of the board. Um, as you can see, the current CPU can already support it. Um, it's just not uh, being made. So 16 gigabytes, I think could be an option. Storage is a totally wild guess. Uh, my belief that this is the weak, weakest link on Raspberry Pi. So I'm hoping we will get an onboard EMMC. Uh, while keeping the micro SD option as well, uh, but this may not happen. 
Uh, I'm also hoping we're going to get a single HDMI port, as I mentioned above. And that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments below. I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and hit the like button as well. Thank you.